food tells a story about history, community, culture, environment, and the economy. It also brings people together in a spirit of sharing, nourishment, and celebration. Maine's culinary roots run deep. Our stewardship of the environment and care for our land and waters, coupled with the hard work and dedication of Mainers, produces the freshest and highest quality shellfish, meats, fruit, veggies, and so much more. The pride we take in our state has positioned Maine as a global culinary destination. From organic farming, craft brewing, cheese making, oyster growing, it's no wonder why so many entrepreneurs, innovators, and foodies want to visit and move here. Thanks for watching The Maine Food Story, a new series and extension of Maine Life. And if you've seen Maine Life, you know that we love to eat, but also to highlight the people that make it all happen. So tonight we have seven courses or segments for you that will hopefully inspire you to try new things and new places. Bon appetit. Hi, I'm Casey Pike, store manager at Maine Mall Hannaford in South Portland. Hannaford got its start on Portland's waterfront in 1883. The Hannaford brothers sold fresh produce from their farm in Cape Elizabeth. A lot has changed since that time, but some things have not. We still pride ourselves on fresh produce, meat and seafood, great customer service, and the role we play in the communities we serve. We know you count on us, and we love being there for you. Hannaford is proud to be the presenting sponsor of the Maine Food Story, and proud to be a part of your food story every day. If you're from Maine, chances are you love seafood. And if you love seafood, you probably love oysters. Well, today you're in for a treat because we're going to introduce you to two oyster farmers from here in Midcoast, Maine that are shelling out some pretty incredible products. Love Point started in 2017. Ben, my business partner, started the farm at a sort of a hobby scale. He was looking for a partner, someone who could help him on the farm. And so I joined up as soon as I finished school in May of 2019. We are in Harpswell, but most of our oysters get sold in the Portland area. And yeah, we're trying to grow every year and get more oysters to people who want them. We're harvesting petites today that we're gonna bring to the restaurants in the Portland area. We've pre-sorted these by hand, and now we're just gonna take them out and bring them to the barge and put them into market bags. We have... A nor'wester today, blowing 15 to 20, which is pretty rough in some parts of the bay. But here at our farm, we're in the lee of Upper Goose Island, and it's really calm and beautiful. Pretty wonderful day for a harvest. Looking real nice. We grow on about three acres in this particular site, and we have another four acres that's near Winslow Park in Freeport. My favorite part about doing this work is looking after these miraculous creatures. They provide an ecological service out here. They actually make the bay a little better by filtering the water. They require zero water, fertilizer, or feed, so it's a pretty amazing crop to, to stand behind. And at the end of the day, they bring a lot of happiness to people at raw bars who eat them. Um, so I just love that notion that I'm like a shepherd of something that's really miraculous and beautiful. All the oysters spend their lives out in the cages out there. And then we bring them back here and, and do all the work on the barge. Um, so this is where we spend most of the day. To have product at the end of the day that you could hold and you know feel and touch and say like, this is my work, here it is. It's a pretty special thing. Our specific location creates a really amazing oyster that has a really strong shell that makes it pretty easy to shuck. You get a really plump meat. We're pretty far out into Casco Bay compared to a lot of oyster farms, which are up in estuaries. We have a freshwater spring on the island that we are situated up against, and so that kind of cuts the salinity and provides a little bit more balance and sweetness. We take this funnel, and slide the market bag over the funnel. Over the funnel. Just cinch it down. Okay. Every bag gets 100. You have about 4,000 to 4, do. 4,000 so. to do, all right. Let's we go gotta get it. to work. Let's yeah. get it going. Pull it around and then pull through. Does that make sense? Gotcha, okay. Might, might take me a couple tries to get that. <laughs> 
That is as fresh as it gets right there. I mean, it doesn't get any better than that. We really appreciate trying to grow an oyster that it's almost like a surprise when you open it up. You're like, wow, that's, that's an amazing oyster, even though it might feel like it's coming in a small package. Thanks for putting me to work, guys. Thanks for showing us all that you do. And I bet these taste amazing, too. Oh, they certainly do, Connor. Thanks so much for coming out. And stick around, everyone, for our annoyingly handsome friend, Barton Seaver. He'll be showing you how to work with these oysters and make them taste delicious. Stick around. Cheers from home, everyone. Who is ready to spice up their main life? Well, we, we are. are, yeah, with our main life marg that we are now putting on the Main Spirits app. I think this is our third or fourth cocktail we're contributing. Go check it out. Now, I like to think of myself as a pretty sweet guy. You are. You're pretty spicy. Thank you. You can be at times. We work well off each other. And we know Vanessa, Vanessa is. is. And that's exactly why she's going to love this drink, the Main Life Mark. Here's how it's made. So you're going to cut two to three slices of jalapeno, depending on your spice preference, and you're going to put it right in your glass. Next, you're going to add in a splash of lime, and you're going to muddle those two things together. Then batting clean up the heavy hitter, tequila. Now we all know tequila's two closest friends, lemon and lime, add those in next. And then finish off with a sweet spot, a little agave. And finally, the closer, the secret ingredient, a little vitamin C, your friend OJ. Shake, shake, shake. Shake, shake, shake. Shake, shake, shake your margi. Shake, shake your margi. And Connor, you put it together in a beautiful glass that we just found at the Ella Bean Home Store. Where we visited earlier this season. All right, time for the taste test. Here we go. A little Ooh. sour, spicy, and definitely bitter. All our three personalities in a mark. Cheers to our main life mark. Cheers. Cheers from home. Hey, I'm Barton Seaver. I'm a chef and an author. My wife and I and our two beautiful boys live here on the ragged, jagged, delicious coast of Maine where I am a seafood evangelist, trying to get more people across all demographics eating more seafood. Today, one of my very favorite of all seafoods from Maine, one of our very best too, oysters. I'm gonna be teaching Aaron how to open one of these foods. Well, unfortunately, it comes from inside of a rock, so we're going to be putting her to the test. So, Love Point Oysters, some of my very favorites. These are uh, friends of mine, Ben Hamilton, who is annoyingly handsome, and uh, his partner Cameron out here in Freeport. So, you just go in through the hinge, and you rotate up, and then you slice along the top, and you get a perfectly shocked little oyster like that. And, well, there you go. This, as I said, is sort of one of the quintessential skills in the modern kitchen. And, I mean, if you're out in the world in Maine on a boat, you need to know how to farms, yes. tours, etc. So. There you go. That's, That's love point. Can I eat this? You can eat this. What else are we making with this? Well, people love cocktail sauce, of course, lemon, maybe some Tabasco on it. I think lemon is the only condiment that I really like. But there's this really, really fun thing that I like to do, which is something I got from my time living over in Africa, which is spicy lamb sausage, fresh out of the oven. So the ice cold oyster just off the farm here with a super hot piece of spicy merguez sausage right out of the oven. The ice cold, the heat of the sausage. So slurp bite. Shot. Yeah, sure. Thanks, friend. Yeah, thank you. Salty, sweet, spicy, lamby. Cool. Right? Yeah. yeah, so there you go. I've never done that. <laughs> yeah, anyway, a lot of fun. So we have to give a shout out to our friends at Bow Street Market right down the street here, one of my favorite destinations. Mm. So good. So good, right? So good. We love Bow Street. No, um, oysters and lamb sausage. And I love when you cook for me, so tell our friends these two out of eight of your books. <laughs> so uh, The Joy of Seafood is my most recent almost 1,000 recipes for almost 100 species of seafood. It's just meant to get more seafood onto your family's plates more often. These are Tuesday night recipes straight out of the pantry. And then uh, my favorite of all my books, American Seafood. This is a, a narrative history of every single species land in the U.S. This is my love letter to the men and women and others that ply our waters, that provide food so nobly for our tables. Thank you for all that you do. I love you. I love living next to you. You make life delicious. In closing, what is your favorite meal, seafood meal for the kiddos? Mm, you know, my kid's favorite food is bluefish. Really? Yeah. The, the most flavorful of all fish. 
You know, and here's the secret. If dad thinks something's cool, my they boys think it's, think cool. it's cool too. Oh, yeah. how, when does that get, when does that last until? No, I don't know, who knows? Hopefully <laughs> Enjoy forever. Enjoy it while it lasts. Well, thank you, friend. Yeah, we'll thank you. you it's soon. nice to see you. You too, as always. As we've been taught, it is a no-no to talk religion and politics at the dinner table. That's true. So each week instead, we're going to be bringing you a little main trivia. And my husband and Vanessa and I get together, it gets real competitive. So, no Googling. We're going to put the answers on at the end of the show. Here we go. Which state competes with Maine for the title of Paul Bunyan's home? Margaret Chase Smith is from which Maine town? And which flower was she known to always wear on her lapel? And last but not least, what's the name of Vanessa's dog? <laughs> Good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me once again for dinner. I'm bringing you an American Italian family style meal, which means food, family, conversation, and actually I think a guest chef will be joining us this evening. Come on in. Yo, oh, Doreen. Carrie put that from knife. Cafe Miranda. Thank oh, you Doreen. again. What do we got going on here? So we have Aaron O'Valley coming as well as the president of Hannaford, Mike Vale. So put together a quick spread. Mm -hmm. We are going to talk Chopino. We're doing a tortellini, yep. quick tortellini on the side. And I think everything from here you can grab in your Hannaford deli, easy to put together. And everybody can just come in and start. It's an experience with friends, an experience with great food, and it's not so hard to do it either. No, we'll get it started. So we're gonna pretend that we're our Polish and Italian-American mm -hmm. grandmothers. Okay. Mike and Aaron are gonna come in, yes. and we're gonna feed them, and then as soon as they have stuff in their mouth, they won't ask us too many important <laughs> questions, and we'll just be talking to you at the camera. And I talk for a living, Oh my so, God, uh, busted. Uh, hey, yo, Aaron. Uh, hey, hey, Mike, great to see you guys. Great to be here. Have you. Absolutely. I do like to eat though, so. Uh, <laughs> we have the spread for you. Parmesan bites. The yes. sauce is next to it. Comes These with. are actually oh, Taste you. of Inspiration's chicken Parmesan bites that you can find in the freezer section. So I'm just so excited quick about and these. easy. Those are actually marinated garlic cloves. Oh my God. But what's great about them is that they're treated. You get the tang, the flavor, the bite of the garlic, but you don't get the garlic breath. Really? Yeah. You, my friend, are from Portland. Uh, from Portland, Maine. You yeah. are a proud <laughs> ram? Daring ram. I almost said bulldog, but that would have been. That would have been a problem. Did you guys have? This interview would have ended. <laughs> <laughs> Still competitive back then? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Portland Daring rivalry was. was uh, very hot and heavy back then, and it still is. And uh, we keep score on who's uh, who's won more games and who hasn't. You still keep in touch with your buddies? I still from... keep in touch with a lot of my high school friends. You know, lifelong relationships form during those key times. And think about those four short years in college or the years in high school, and, and those relationships uh, endure a long time. So it's a, they're lifetime relationships. Show us what you got, you guys. Okay, here it is, so <laughs> cheese tortellini. <laughs> we pre-cooked the tortellini already. We have some fresh parsley, some fresh basil. Uh, Sun-dried tomatoes, a little bit of capers, fabulous little flavor enhancer. Well, I guess we're ready, huh? We are ready. Bring it on over. Pasta is my middle name. <laughs> well, Aaron, there's pasta in your future. Then we have the fabulous Chipino coming up, which is... Yeah, I see I see a little something off to the side yeah. here. And uh, maybe yeah. you can tell us what Fancy. that is, Carrie. Uh... We are. We're going to do the Chipino, which is really just a fancy word for fish stew. Just basically... Fry peppers and onions, add tomatoes. Thank you. That's kind of the game. Yes. Oh, wait, did I forget garlic? How could <laughs> I do such a thing? We have the recipe on uh, Hannaford.com, so you can oh. find it there as well. We're doing shrimp and mussels, haddock and little necks. Look at the clam. There's a clam about to open. Get, get a close up Great. of that clam. Look at that mussel. So there's the clam. There's the clam. There's, there's the, the mussels. Muscle. There's the shrimp. Everything shrimpies. is cooking nicely. Look at this. Beautiful. All right, awesome. looks like we're all done. Clams are open, mussels are open. Yeah, yeah. Fish is gently Steaming. done. Bring it Wonderful. on. Wonderful. Yes, and we use wow. these for everything. Look at that. Wow. That looks good. Fish in there, yes. mussels, all that stuff. Let's dish some of this up. This is my first time having chipino, guys. Okay, Thank you. Great. I love family night, like bringing people together. That's what you guys do. Yes every day yeah sometimes you have to sit back and reflect on the fact that that we're providing food for people uh, to have moments like these and yeah. to uh and to raise their families and 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 to live and 
it's a pretty awesome feeling when you when you think about that. Growing up with the girls, did you try to have dinner at night with the fam? We did. Yeah, we we were really good about you know three or four days a week that we'd have meals, and because the kids as they got into high school and older. Sports. You know, that started to become more and more of a challenge. But uh, we always had a three things about your day. You know, kind of we were around the like table that. and had everyone, nice. you know, kind of uh, brought everybody in, had them reflect just a little bit. And it, it was never anything heavy, but it was, uh, it was just sort of something we did. And, and the girls all looked forward to it. They said, no, no, no. And then the night I didn't do it, they would say, well, what about our three oh, things, Dad? Right. Oh, fabulous. That's cute. This is what we love about it. We love feeding people. We love bringing people together. But you can't close out an Italian meal without a great Italian tiramisu. dessert. And uh, I was able to, to pick up some a tiramisu and some cannolis from our local bakery. Sugar coma coming on. Oh, yeah. Well, cheers to Maine yeah. life, Maine food stories, and more of this. Cheers. cheers. Thank you. Yeah, Good guys. to see you, Mike. Thanks, Thank guys. Thank you. Kathy Miranda. Thanks, oh, guys. There you go. Thanks. Hey, everybody. Josh Cushman, Skymore Construction Company. My much better half, Deborah Wetmore. We build custom kitchens and homes. We loved having you in our home tonight. Hope you're having a great dinner. Thanks so much for joining us. Cheers. Cheers. We're bringing the plus side to used car buying with Honda True Used. 10 model years of Honda vehicles. Plus 100 day, 5,000 mile limited warranty. Plus three day exchange policy plus one year, 12,000 mile roadside assistance. Equals the better way to buy used. Don't just shop used, shop Honda True Used. At Aristyle, we specialize in bra fit. So we work with women on a one-on-one -on -one basis to provide them comfortable, well-fitting bras for their everyday life, as well as for those moments of fun. And although someone might look at this store and what we do and think, oh, it's just a lingerie store, I challenge you to think about what lingerie is in completely different terms. Because for a woman, it's the first layer she puts on her body every day. And it's going to set the tone for not only how she goes about her day, but how she feels about herself. And that's always gonna have a ripple effect in her life and the lives of her loved ones and those that she reaches every day. Maine is a lifestyle destination. With over 3,500 miles of coastline, lakes, mountains, and four season recreation, there's a reason Maine is known as vacation land. At Harcourt's Waterfront and Fine Properties, we're the Maine real estate lifestyle experts. If you're thinking about moving to Maine, we can help you not only find a property, but the perfect home to fit your lifestyle. Contact us today to make your dream of living in vacation land come true. Harcourt's, we're with you all the way. Hi, this is Jaeger from Berlin City Auto Group. We believe that our community is stronger when we face challenges together. Over the past year, we were able to raise $71,000 for 25 schools across New England. These grants went to special teachers and classrooms to support a variety of needs. Some as simple as clothing and boots to outdoor activity center and even the self-sustaining lettuce farm. To learn more and nominate your school, visit BerlinCity.com. Welcome back everybody on this week's Conversations with Chefs. Vanessa goes to Owl's Head to meet up with her dear friend and executive chef and owner of Primo, Melissa Kelly. Okay, so before we get started, how much more excited are you to film with us than you were Gordon Ramsay? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know the answer to that question, you're my favorite. That's right, <laughs> all right. <laughs> First, I thought we'd start with the MK Garibaldi, right? Got sounds to. sounds perfect. Um, <laughs> and then um, we're gonna make some gnocchi. These are the saffron gnocchetti. It's because oh you're past, you're the pastasaurus. I am the pastasaurus. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm gonna cut this in half, and then you're gonna roll it into a rope. Push down like as you're rolling it, so it's even. She might want to hire me. No this. pointy ends. Oh. <laughs> okay, so you're gonna take that. Okay. Kind of hold it at an angle. Okay. And then pick one up. Start at the top and push it down with your thumb and roll it. Look at you. You're yeah, what are you, Italian expert. or something? Yeah. It's pretty embarrassing that I don't know how to make gnocchi. <laughs> and then we're gonna go outside and we're gonna steam up some little neck clams with some Yum. primo hot Italian sausage. Yum. And swordfish. 
And this is what you make for yourself at home. I do, actually. You know, I, I always kind of feel like I crave fish being here on the coast. And yeah. I don't want to go out to eat on my day off, you know? Yeah. Sometimes <laughs> I don't want to see another restaurant or a restaurant person. So I like to just stay home and make something I, I would enjoy. That you would enjoy. Yeah. It's windy, it's chilly, <laughs> but we're rugged, so... It's Maine. It's you know? Maine. I love to cook outside because then I don't have the mess in the kitchen. Get more salt on you than That's on right. the swordfish. And did you get those from Jess's? I did. Jess's I Market. Did. <laughs> there you are. Wow. So you moved to Maine over 23 years ago, and Rockland back then looked completely different. Maine's culinary scene, farm scene, brewing scene, everything was completely different. There wasn't a lot going on on Main Street in, Rock in Rockland in general. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't sure if this was going to work here. And I said, if it doesn't work, we'll go somewhere else. But I think there's great potential in Maine. I know we have the sea and we have the mountains where the wild mushrooms and ramps and all the wild greens we get and edible flowers and there are great small farms doing local eggs and chickens and beef and pork. And mm -hmm. we have award-winning cheeses here in Maine. And I'm happy to have worked from ground up with a lot of these producers. Mm -hmm. You own a farm and a restaurant, and you also have restaurants in other states. Mm -hmm. So if you ever have downtime, yeah. what do you like to do when you're not working? I mean, when we're in season, it's pretty hardcore because the farm and the restaurant, there's always things mm -hmm. going on. But uh, on my day off, I try and, you know, take my kayak out there, mm -hmm. uh, take a bike ride or some get some kind of physical activity but be outside. Yeah. It's funny because, like, I have students who will come from Singapore or different places around the country and uh, they take time on their days off to go travel and see, and they come back and show me their pictures. And I'm like, you've seen more of Maine than I have. <laughs> well, thank you so much. I feel like I'm getting a preview to uh, the 23rd season, so I'm really excited. Yeah, it was a pleasure having you <laughs> again, and I'll see you soon. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers, everyone. Cheers. Welcome everyone, tonight we're bringing you to Hamden, Maine, where they have one of the best examples of Maine's official state treat, the whoopie pie. The ladies at the dental loft know that this is my favorite place to have a whoopie pie. Let's go meet Paul. Heather loves a good whoopie. <laughs> Hi, this is Paul from Pizza Gourmet. We're here in Hamden, Maine. Uh, we've been here for 30 years now. Uh, we're well known for our whoopie pies. The same recipe and the same whoopie pies for, for 20 years now. I have customers will come in and buy some of our whoopie pies and send them to Texas or send them to California for, for a taste of home. So now you're going to meet Helen. She's a longtime manager here, been helping out for a really long time, and she's going to help Heather and Matt make some whoopie pies. This is where we're making the whoopie pies. That's fantastic. I've heard from so many friends that these are the best whoopie pies in the state of Maine. What makes them so special? What makes them special is the fact that they're crispy on the outside and fluffy on the inside, and that's due to the fact that we put them through the pizza oven just to make them crispy. If you get one of our whoopie pies and you've had it wrapped in plastic for a couple of days, you can unwrap it and they're not gonna be sticky. All right, Matt, I'm gonna have you scooping whoopie pies. You're gonna level off the scoop, and then you're gonna lay it out on the sheet. <laughs> I think I got pretty good technique. You don't want the customers to be disappointed. <laughs> and then Heather, I'm gonna actually have you fill a couple. So you're just gonna take the scoop of that, okay. and you're gonna put it right on here, and you're gonna spread it with your spoon. I don't know, Helen, is that enough cream? Yes, that looks good. Okay. So Helen, can you tell us what the secret ingredient is here? No, I'm not gonna say it's a secret. We're gonna keep it that way. <laughs> if you wanna know how good they are, you gotta come in and try one. I agree. <laughs> Thanks for watching this week's episode. We hope you feel inspired to go out and create your own main food story. Follow us on Instagram, Main Food Story, or on Facebook, Main Life Media. Thank you to our sponsors, New Center Maine. It's PJ time. Say goodbye. From Moosey, Brooks, and the rest of us, we'll see you next week. <laughs> I don't know what happened. The first time I went on Match.com, one, <laughs> one of my Margolski, Matt Margolski paired with me, and I was like, <gasps> one of my cooks, and, and I... <laughs> He, I went to work and he said, Chef, somebody stole your profile. I'm like, they did? <laughs> <laughs>
and then you took it down. I took it down immediately. <laughs> Forget about the food. Just I want to hear about Melissa's match.com oh experience. It's horrible. Oh my god.